Well, hi there, kiddos. I sure hope that you have had an enjoyable weekend. Um, we're going to solve multi-step equations today, but this time they're going to involve the distributive property. Last Friday um, in, in class, we did multi-step equations, but now we're going to add a step to that. We're going to add the distributive property to them. So our first step in every problem that we have today is going to be to get rid of parentheses. You have to make the parentheses go away before you can solve. So step one is going to be get rid of all the parentheses. So look at the first example. I have 2 times the quantity 4 plus 3x and that equals negative 4. I cannot solve this equation as long as there are parentheses involved. So step one, I have to do the distributive property to get rid of parentheses. So I'm going to do my hip hop. So I'm going to multiply here. That's 8. And I'm going to multiply here and that becomes 6x. Don't forget to put your plus sign in between them and that equals negative 4. Now I have a multi-step equation that is familiar to me. I've seen one like this and I can start solving it. So we'll remember, we're going to do the opposite of what's being done and we always start with what's being added or subtracted. In this case, the plus 6x is being added, but what's being added to it is the 8. And so we have to cancel out this 8. And then you don't look at the sign behind it. You look at what's in front of it. Since that's a positive 8, to get rid of it, I do a negative 8. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So now I have 6x equals negative 12. And then to undo multiplying by 6, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So I get that x equals negative 2. There is my answer. If you try to solve before getting rid of the parentheses, you're going to have a bad time. So the second example is a little bit different. It does have parentheses. They do have to be gotten rid of, but there's also a 3 plus all of that. And so you're going to get rid of these parentheses, but this 3 plus we're not going to do anything with. So we're just going to bring it down for now because in step one, nothing will happen to that. So now I'm going to distribute 5 times y becomes 5y. 5 times negative 2 becomes negative 10, so I'm going to put minus 10. Now I'm going to put my like terms together. I have numbers that can go together. I can put together this 3 with this minus 10, so I can do 3 minus 10. So I end up with 8 equals negative 7, because that's what 3 minus 10 is, plus 5y. Now I can solve my equation. I don't have to simplify before I solve, but trust me, it makes your life easier. It shortens the problem. So now I've got to get rid of this minus 7 by doing a plus 7. And 8 plus 7 is 15. So I have 15 equals 5y. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I will get that 3 equals y. There is my solution. So let's practice a few more because they don't always look exactly the same. This next problem, I have the 7 equals 4x minus the quantity of 2 minus x. It just has this minus sign in front with no number. And if you remember, that means that there is a 1 right there. So when we do this problem, we're going to have to distribute a negative 1. So I have to distribute negative 1 to 2, which becomes minus 2. And a negative 1 times a negative x, the two negatives, negatives make a positive, so that becomes plus. 1x and I don't have to put the 1. I'm not going to but you can if you want. Now I can combine like terms here. I have 4x plus x which becomes 5x so I have 5x minus 2 and to solve I'll add 2 on both sides. So I end up with 9 equals 5x and then when I divide by 5 on both sides. 9 does not divide by 5 into a nice pretty whole number. It becomes a decimal. You can do one of two things here. You can either divide it and get the decimal or you can just skip that step altogether and say x equals 9 fifths. There's nothing wrong with that answer. Improper fractions are cool. We don't mind them. That can be good. If you just don't like it and you have to go ahead and do it, you can divide them out and you can tell me that it's 1.8 instead. These are the same answer. This one, however, is easier. I didn't have, I could just stop. I didn't have to go any further. Now the next problem has a lot shaken. Parentheses first have to disappear, so we're going to distribute. Negative 2 times x becomes negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 becomes positive 6 divided by 5 equals 12. And if you'll remember from last Friday when we did these kinds of problems, the first thing we want to do is get rid of this denominator. So we're going to clear our fraction by multiplying both sides by 5. 
That way, these fives will cancel out so that I just have negative 2x plus 6 left. Do not multiply the 5 times the numerator. The fives will cancel, and that's it. Then on the other side, 12 times 5 makes 60. So then I can begin to solve. I can subtract 6. So I have negative 2x equals 54. And then I can divide by negative 2. And so x equals... I should know that one by in my, in my head, but for some reason I didn't this morning. So x equals negative 27. And that's, that's how you do that one. Parentheses first, then clear your fraction, then go ahead and solve what is remaining. Now the next two are, look a lot different, okay? Or at least the next one. This one right here, there's a lot happening. I've got a fraction equals another fraction. And when I run across a problem like this, I know that there are not parentheses, at least not right now. There are going to be, however, once I start to solve it. Because I'm going to solve this problem like I would solve any proportion I ever saw. And proportions are something you saw in 7th and 8th grade. It shouldn't be completely new to you. And to solve a proportion, we always cross multiply. So that's what we're going to do to begin to solve this problem. So anytime you run across a problem like this, the first thing you should think is, it's a proportion I need to cross multiply. First thing that's going to happen is I'm going to take this negative and I'm going to put it up here with the 1. Instead of having it out to the side, I'm going to put it with the 1 so that it applies to just one of the numbers. And then I'm going to cross multiply and we're going to do it this way. Here is really easy. 3 times negative 1 becomes negative 3. But then I have to multiply like this. And so I have to do 2 times all of this. That means I have to do 2 times the quantity of negative 4n minus 1. And so I have to multiply 2 times that entire thing, not just part of it. So now I have parentheses. Now I've got a distributive problem. So I'm going to do the distributive property. That becomes negative 8n, and that becomes negative 2. And now I can solve, so I'm going to add 2 on both sides. So I have negative 1 equals negative 8n, and when I divide both sides by negative 8, it's like the problem earlier where we had the 9 fifths as our answer. We're going to leave it as a fraction, but what we're going to do is get rid of our negatives. A negative and a negative when you're in a division problem becomes positive. So 1 eighth equals n. If you want to turn that into a decimal, more power to you. 0.125 is certainly uglier than 1 eighth, but either one works. Now that last problem right there is very much like the second problem that we did together. It's going to have that. You've got a 6x out there that doesn't have to be distributed, so we're going to bring it down. And then don't pay, forget that there's a negative in front of this 2, so when you distribute, you have negative 2 times 3x, which is negative 6x. And then you have negative 2 times 4, which becomes negative 8, equals negative 20. Now, when I combine like terms, this 6x minus 6x, what happens to those? Well, if I do 6x minus 6x, they just cancel each other out, and what I have left is negative 8 equals negative 20. Is that a true statement? Well, not in this world it's not. Negative 8 does not equal negative 20. And since they are not equal to each other, what I have to say for this problem is that this problem has no solution. What that means is there is no value of x I can plug in here that will make this side equal this side. And if you don't want to write out the words no solution, you can draw this symbol. That means the same thing, but you need to understand that that problem has no answer. So now let's do some word problems. We're going to draw some pictures and then solve. Okay, so I've already got a picture. You do not. So the first thing you're going to do is draw yourself an equilateral triangle. Because in the problem, they tell us the perimeter of an equilateral triangle is 63 inches. They tell you the length of each side is 4x minus 3. We want to find out what x equals. It doesn't say find the length of a side. It says find x. So I know that each side is 4x minus 3, and it's equilateral, so they're all the same. So we're going to find x, and then it does say find the length of a side. I lied. The last sentence does say. So here's what we're going to do. We know that we're dealing with perimeter. Add all the sides. So let's add all our like terms. 4x plus 4x is 8x, plus another 4x is 12x, and then minus 3, and minus 3 is minus 6, minus another 3 becomes minus 9, that has to equal 63. This is my perimeter. This is what the perimeter equals from the words they gave me. So now we will solve. I will add 9 to both sides. So 
So I have 12x equals 72. And then when I divide both sides by 12, I get that x equals 6. Well, so I've taken care of this. x is 6. But the last sentence says, find the length of a side. So now I have to take this and plug it into here. So one side is 4x minus 3. So to find out how long each side is, i got to plug in that 6 and do the calculations. Well, that's 24 minus 3, which happens to be 21. And they do not give me units, so we just get to say it's 21 or 21 units. They don't tell me feet, inches, whatever. Oh, they do. I lied. It says it right here, inches. So the length of each side is 21 inches. So let's do another one. The length of a rectangle is three times the width. If the perimeter is 96 centimeters, what's the area of the rectangle? The first thing you have to look at is the first sentence tells you about, it talks about the length in terms of the width because it says the length is three times the width. That tells me that my length is going to be three times whatever the width is. Well, they don't tell me anything about the width, which just means it's going to be called W. So let's label all our sides. Again, they tell me perimeter is 96, so we're going to add them up. So 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7, plus another one is 8. So I have 8W for the perimeter, and the perimeter they tell me is 96. This is a sweet little single step equation. I'm going to divide both sides by 8. And when I do, I get that the width is 12 centimeters. But that's not what the question asks for. The question says, what is the area of the rectangle? Well, in order to find area, I have to be able to do length times width. Well, right now, I only know the width. The length is 3 times that. So the length is 3w, which is 3 times 12, which makes it 36 centimeters. So in order for me to do this problem and find the area, I've got to plug them in. So now area is 36 for the length times 12 for the width, and when I multiply those together, I get that the area of my rectangle is 432 centimeters. This is the answer they are looking for. Do not stop right here because you haven't answered the question. Always go back, make sure you've answered the question. So now we have two more. One is a complementary problem, one is a supplementary problem. I'm going to do the supplementary, and then I'm going to have you try the complementary, and we'll check it as soon as you come to class. So this next one, a and angle A and angle B are supplementary. If the measure of angle A is 4 times the quantity 4x plus 5, and the measure of angle B is 2 times the quantity x plus 8, find the measure of the largest angle. So i got to know which one's bigger. Well, let's label. This one is 4 times the quantity 4x plus 5. This one is 2 times the quantity x plus 8. And I need to find the largest angle. Well, all I have are variables now. I'm willing to bet that angle A right here is the largest angle because you've got 4 times and then you've got more multiplying and adding. Well, here's what we do. Supplementary angles equal 180. So I have to add these up. So angle A plus angle B. That should be an 8, not a 5 equals 180 degrees. Now distribute, get rid of parentheses. 4 times 4x is 16x. 4 times 5 is 20. Then 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 8 is 16 equals 180. Now let's do like terms. So I have 16x plus 2x, which makes 18x. And then I have 20 plus 16, which is 36 equals 180. Solve like we know how, so I subtract 36 from both sides. So I have 18x equals 144. Then I have to divide both sides by 18. So I get that x equals 8. But that doesn't tell me anything. I just now know what x equals. What I have to find is the largest angle. I think that this is the largest angle. We're, and and if looking at the picture, that is definitely the largest angle. But we're going to plug in so we know for sure. So I have 4 times the quantity of 4 times 8 plus 5. And then I have to do parentheses first. Well, 4 times 8 is 32. 
and 32 plus 5 becomes 37. So I have 4 times 37, which equals 148 degrees. Well, since together they have to be 180, there's no way this one is bigger than that one. So this is your largest angle. So the last one here is the one about complementary angles. It says one of the two complementary angles is 30 degrees more than twice the other. Find the measure of both angles. We'll start the setup, then I'm going to have you solve. Complementary, remember, means 90 degrees when you add them together. It tells you that one of the angles is 30 degrees more than two times the other angle. Well, then X has to be the other angle, so this one is just X. You cannot forget to label this angle. You cannot just do this and solve the problem because this represents only one of the angles. It even says so, one of those angles. So make sure you add them together, solve for X, and then tell me how big both angles are. And we will check this together when you come to class tomorrow. Have a good rest of your long weekend, and I will see you then.